Everybody looks so sleepy here, so I'm going to give you one pop quiz today. So I'm going to ask one quiz. If you have one thing, for example, if you see one of these on your couch in your living room, what would you do? Number one, toss it. Number two, recycle it. Number three, donate to Goodwill. Number four, as long you keep, you keep it as long as it lasts. So what's the answer? Whoa, 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 easy tigers. Whoa. <laughs> So keep that the answer, so I'm going to revisit this question later on, because this is going to be quite interesting. November 23rd, year 2012, I felt I was guilty, because I was going against the security blanket theory. So do you know what the day is, November 23rd? Yes, it was Black Friday. <laughs> At the time, the latest technology, latest cell phone, was going for only 96 cents. So I couldn't really pass this chance. So I went to Sam's Club quite early in the morning. So well, I look quite tired. <laughs> I got two of them. So I felt really proud myself because I could save a few hundred dollars right away. So I went home feeling happy and proud. And I was looking at my daughter, reading her book, and she was holding her security blanket. As a matter of fact, she was keeping that blanket more than four years. So that got me big thinking. So that's the cell phone that I was going through. So year 2001, that's my first cell phone ever I owned. And it's about a cell phone. So actually, I'm holding this guy, another one. So this includes nine cell phones there. So over the 12 years, I've been changing the cell phone nine times. So I did simple math. 12 divided by nine comes out, what? It's about 1.333333. <laughs> so means roughly I've been changing my cell phone every one and a half years, which means I've been changing my cell phone three times and at the same time, my daughter is still keeping the security blanket, which is quite sustainable. So what is the security blanket? So those of you who have the keys know exactly what the security blanket means. However, if you don't have the keys, you'll be fine still. <laughs> the security blanket is the something that gives us a psychological comfort to especially unique situation. So if you see the little boy on the left side, he seems quite happy. And if I take the blanket out, and he goes crazy, and <laughs> he's just crying. And that's my own daughter. So I've been doing a lot of close observation. In 18 months, the first thing in the morning she wakes up, she had to have it. Even while she was drinking the water, she had to grab the blanket. And she plays with it during daytime. And she covers her eyes. And she was trying to play and seek and hide. And she's covering her eyes. She thought she's hiding from me. <laughs> and wrapping around, just rolling with it. And she doesn't lose anything. And after dinner time, she felt a little tired and sleepy. And when she goes to bed, Literally, she grabbed both of them. <laughs> and she goes back, and when she sleep, literally she had to have it. She can't go to sleep without it. So another observation. When she take a bath in 37 months, she still has to have it. 49 months. She still have it, and she can't sleep without it. In 15 months, I did actually interesting experiments. Ah! <laughs> Apple. 
Isn't she adorable, lovely? <laughs> so by the way, she's my daughter. <laughs> well, as you could see the little movie clip, there are two blankets, the yellow one and white one. She saw the yellow one, she didn't even touch it. The white one is one that she keeps it all the time. The white one is one that she really likes. She just grabs it and she knows what she wants and she seems so happy. That's the security blanket. So I've been reading a lot of books about psychology, neuroscience, and social behavior, social science to understand the theory of emotions. So I've been reading a book, and this is one of, one of my favorite books, called The Cartes Error by Antonio Damasio. He's one of the pioneers in neuroscience. And I was able to find out the difference between the feeling and emotion, and difference between the true and truth. According to the hymns, according to his book, the definition of feeling is the mental representation occurs in juxtaposition to the thought and evaluation about the stimulus that triggers bodily change in the first place. And the definition of emotion is the process for a typical case beginning with the thought and evaluation. And that mental activity triggers bodily response. So I'm going to give you one short question, uh, one short example. She's crying, the tears. And that's the bodily response. And that's the emotion. And she realized that she is alone. She feels emptiness. And she just found out, oh my god, I have no boyfriend, I'm single. <laughs> that's the mental representation. And that's the feeling. So how about the difference between true and truth? In terms of true, well, the snow is white. And a lot of people saying the snow is white and pure and clean. Well, that's a true statement. And because we have really positive feeling and stereotype about the snow, we really have a lot of fun and play the snow. And sometimes people eat the snow. <laughs> this couple looks quite happy. However, a month later, when we start having the spring, and that's the snow we were eating. Ew. And that's the truth. And there's another big difference between true and truth. In terms of true, somehow it comes out a lot of number. For example, the car commercial. They always talk about horsepower, torque, and gas mileage. It's all about number. We don't really remember. In terms of truth, we still remember the fairy tale story, story from my grandpa and grandma, because truth is typically a form of a story. So there's no doubt that little boy and little girl has security blanket, and as we adults do have the security blanket, I guess the best example is a cell phone. We carry the smartphone, cell phones all the time. We can't really live without it. So for example, you go to work, and all of a sudden, you realize that, oh my god, I left my cell phone at home. And what's going to happen? We're just shocked. <laughs> That's the bodily response that I'm talking about. So what's the security blanket theory in design? The two design the products triggers bodily response and change. Because the product gives us psychological comfort. And it gives us a comfortable feeling and positive feeling to attach the products. Well, so there are four, the four components of security blanket theory. The first component is expansion ability. Expansion ability is just like play, like glue. So expansion ability connect them together between the three components. So there are three circles, an entity and elements, environments. Entity as a user, elements as a products, and environments as user scenario. So expansion abilities connects all the components. So I will try to explain what the expansion abilities is to my daughter, but she wasn't really getting it. She just got the part of the glue. So she was having a lot of fun with the glue, 
And it was the day on April 1st, April Fool, while I was sleeping. So best example of expansionability is the card. So if you buy a piece of card and for Christmas or birthday, so typically you see the generic message, Merry Christmas or Happy Birthday. But you see a lot of white space. And that's the where we expand our thought and feeling. We put the message. And then people tend to keep it long period of time. You don't really want to just throw things away because that's the, our feeling and memory. So second component is true. You don't want to create or express the identity when entity meets products, elements, and it creates expression. When expression meets expansionability, it becomes true. So best example is iPhone. A lot of people buy iPhone. It's quite popular here. However, it's really hard to find iPhone case, the same iPhone case. People want to buy different iPhone case because they don't want to be the same people like any, everybody. So they want to buy iPhone case to express their identity and their feeling. Third component, the true. User want to create their own story. So when entity meets elements, it creates, yes, now it's coming, epics. The epic means literally the story. So when story meets expansionability, it becomes a truth. So we go to the beach all the time, and sometimes a lot of people, there are a lot of people in the beach. However, when people go home, they bring their own story. They don't want to bring the same story like everybody does. So that's why a lot of people do crazy things and stupid things <laughs> to create their own story. The last component is the memory. When environment meets elements, it creates exhibition. So exhibition means something to show. So when exhibition meets expansionability, it creates memory. In 1997, there's a really one popular movie called Titanic. And ever since that, there's something called Titanic thing. So every, t every time that I see people in the, even little teeny tiny ship or cruise or little, little the fishing boat, people do Titanic thing. <laughs> Not really sure this guy is really happy, <laughs> but somehow this lady just, just want to try the trend because she wanted to create her own story and memory. So four component, expansionability, the true and truth and memory. That's the security blanket theory. So as I'm designer, as I'm design educator, I believe the design process should embrace security blanket theory, expansionability, true and truth, truth and memory. So how do we embrace these components? How do we embrace the security blanket theory? A lot of design research, even including myself, do a lot of survey and conduct a focus, the focus group interview and looking at a lot of the statistic, color trend, all the et cetera. However, sometimes we miss the biggest thing. We really have to know how people feel. The feeling is the most powerful communication tool that we could utilize in the design process. So why am I talking about security blanket theory? I believe the product with the security blanket theory Expansionability, true truth, and memory tend to be lasting longer. So there's a big difference between the security blanket from the little boy and the cell phone that we have all the time. So as a matter of fact, the two of them, the cell phone and security blanket has four components. Expansionability, truth, 
and through a memory. If you think about carefully, there's a big difference. The cell phone doesn't have tangible experience. The cell phone stores as truth and memory as form of data. Probably, when I'm finished my contract, this is my cell phone, I probably buy another one. But I'm not really sure about my daughter. She would want to keep it, her security blanket, as long as it lasts. So this is my question. So what would you do if you see the blanket in your couch, in your living room? Any answer? Oh, man. There you go. Thank you.